Hi readers, thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be reading the book A Cow Called Boy by C. Everett Palmer. A Cow Called Boy, Chapter 1. The first day of school was a beautiful one. The sun was already up in Kendall and yellowing the land. And the schoolyard itself looked fresh from the summer of rest. The lawns were green and the trees had grown new buds. And the kush, kush grass, which had been planted in rows to prevent erosion, had been untroubled for two months by children playing hide and seek and looked healthy again. After such a long break from school, the children were so happy to be going back that they arrived early. Only Josh Mahone was late. Twice he had returned home leading his pet calf who was determined to follow him to school. But apparently the calf just didn't feel like staying home. For as Josh was nearing the school for the third time, he heard a soft moo behind him. He turned around to see Boy coming up the road. Boy, he said resignedly, not again. I told you animals are not allowed in school. Josh wondered what to do now. If I take you home another time, I'll be double late for school. He put his arm around Boy. You are bad, Boy, very bad. But I love you. You shouldn't have come, but I understand, in a way. We've been together all summer, and it's going to be my first day away from you. You can't take that now, can you? To better think of a way to solve the problem, Josh sat down on a stump by the roadside. He couldn't go back home now, or he would be in trouble with his mother. And he couldn't go to school either, not with boy tagging along. Maybe he would have to play truant. But on the first day of school, that was no way to start the term. To himself, he said, I don't want to miss the first day of school. Everybody will be there. So Josh was truly in a fix. What was he to do? Meanwhile, boy was quietly chewing on a mouthful of grass. Just then, a tall man smoking a pipe came ambling up the road, walking with difficulty as though he had sustained a fall and hurt himself. He was dressed in khaki trousers and a blue shirt and was wearing braces and a cap. Howdy, Josh. Good morning, Mr. Kelly. What are you doing here when all the kiddies are in school? Mr. Kelly asked, removing his pipe. That's my problem, sir. I should be in school, I mean, but I'm here because of this stupid boy. What boy? Mr. Kelly asked, turning and looking all around. I don't see no boy. Josh began to laugh. He pointed at the calf. His boy. That's the name I give him. I'd say that's quite a name, said Mr. Kelly, walking around the calf. And my Josh, how he's grown. Oh my, oh my. Turning back to Josh, he said, I see you took good care of him, all right. I don't regret at all that I gave him to you. It was true. The mother had died when boy was born. And not wanting to bother with calf, Mr. Kelly had decided to give him to Mrs. Mahone, Josh's mother. Mr. Mahone has died. And Josh and his mother lived alone in a, on, the, on the small farm. Bertha, this calf is just right for your boy Josh, Mr. Kelly said. What are you trying to do, Tom? Saddle my boy with that half-dead calf so he won't do any work around here? Oh no, nothing of the sort. But think what good thing for him. That kid's lonely and a single pea in a bowl of soup. He's no brothers or sisters to play with. It'll be something for him to get his hand into. Think about it, Bertha, Mr. Kelly had added. 
and it's free, the calf, I mean. Josh had been listening. Please, mom, he said. May I? May you what? Have the calf, mom. See what you've done, Tom? Now if I don't get that calf, this son of man will give me no peace. So Josh had been given the calf which he had bottle fed and taken care of until now. Boy was standing about three feet high and as spunky as they come. Now, what's the problem you say? Mr. Kelly asked Josh. He wants to go to school with me, sir. That made Mr. Kelly laugh. He does now, does he? Yes, sir. And I've taken him back twice already. Now I'm late. Why didn't you tie him and leave him at home? Josh sprang to his feet. Tie him? Not me, Mr. Kelly. I won't put a rope on him, sir. You mean he's never been tied? No, sir. He goes around like, like a dog or a cat? Josh laughed and burst off white teeth. He goes around like this, Mr. Kelly, but not like a dog or a cat either. He's better than either a cat or a dog. Boy's well trained. He's more sensible than some children I know. You don't say, Mr. Kelly said. He puffed hard on his pipe, then went on. Well, I suppose you've got to stay away from school today, Josh. Either that or tie boy at home. Miss School, Josh thought. And today everybody gets his turn in front of the class to tell all he did during the holiday. Oh no, a hundred no's. Suddenly he had an idea. I won't tie him up, Mr. Kelly, and I won't miss school either. I know what I can do. What? I'm taking him. Where, son? To school, sir. Mr. Kelly laughed and scratched his head. The schools are getting modern, but I don't think they've moved so far as to enroll cows, Josh. Josh started walking. See you, Mr. Kelly, he said. Come on, boy. Let me know how he makes out in spelling and arithmetic, Mr. Kelly said, chuckling. Josh knew Mr. Kelly was making fun of him, so he did not reply. He went on towards the school building, walking fast with one arm resting on boy's neck. The calf walked on, stepping as proudly as though he were in a parade. He was a beautiful animal, chubby and mostly grayish in color, but spotted with white in a number of places. His face was a, was a charming blend of gray and white. Josh could hear the school children singing the national anthem as they finished assembly. I have the greatest idea, boy, he said. If only Mrs. Anthony will allow me, it will work. Come on, maybe you'll be a student for at least a little while. Well, a guest anyway, but hurry. When they got to, to the side of the building, through the window, Josh could hear Mrs. Anthony checking attendance. Karen Lawson, here, ma'am. Brad Matthews, present, ma'am. Josh Mahone, nobody answer. Josh Mahone, stay here, boy, he said to his pet. I will be a minute. He raced into the school. Present, ma'am, he called from the door. Everybody turned to look at him. Mrs. Anthony, who had just closed the register, got up from her desk. She was a tall woman. Her face was slightly lumpy, was rough as always. Late the first morning, Josh, she said. Yes, ma'am, but with a reason. Mm, I see. Good reason, ma'am, he said, smiling and shifting his feet around. What's your reason, she asked, removing the handkerchief that was neatly tucked into her belt and sneezing into it. You see, ma'am, I had some trouble with my summer project. That's why I'm late, Mrs. Anthony. All the children's eyes were on Josh. They knew him for a prankster, and they also knew that he always made up a good reason for his mischiefs. Some of the boys were chuckling. This Josh was something else. You were having trouble with your summer project? I see, Mrs. Anthony said. 
speaking very slowly. Josh knew that this was a time to watch out. When she spoke slowly and in a low tone, she didn't monkey around. Children, she said to the others, you've all got your projects completed, haven't you? Yes, ma'am, they answered enthusiastically. Some held up written accounts beautifully bound, others just their hands because they were going to ad lib. But, said Mrs. Anthony, our dear Josh Mahone was still working on his this morning. No, ma'am, you don't quite understand, you see, but Josh was robbed of the chance to explain, for he heard the clip clop of small hooves on the floor. Turning, he saw Boy ambling down the corridor, flicking his tongue and swishing his tail. You see, Boy did indeed have some human qualities, for with his tiny horns, he had opened the outer door, and here he was now, happy as a lark. Josh didn't know what to say. He looked wildly around. I, I, was all he could manage. His classmates giggled. Josh quickly stepped into the room, closing the door behind him and shutting out Boy. I gather you are finished though, Josh. Yes, m'm. Good, my dear Mr. Comedian, because we're going to commence with your report. I trust also that you had a grand time and are anxious to tell us about it. Yes, ma'am. Anxious, anxious. Suddenly, there was a banging and a scraping on the other side of the door. What's that? Mrs. Anthony asked, somewhat alarmed. Josh smiled nervously. My project, ma'am. I don't get it, Josh. May I bring him in, Mrs. Anthony? She raised her brows. Well, yes, I guess so. Josh opened the door and in walked Boy. There were oohs and ahs and hays from the boys and shrieks from the girls. Oh my Lord, Mrs. Anthony said and almost fainted. Get him out of here, are you crazy? Boy stood there unconcerned, flicking out his coarse tongue and licking his master's hand. But ma'am, Mrs. Anthony was both amazed and afraid. What would the principal think? and the other teachers. The school board would be furious. They might even ask her to resign. The parents, they were always the sharpest critics. They expected teachers to be in firm control of their classes. Out, out, Mrs. Anthony said, and knew in almost hysterical tone as she walked briskly around her desk. Get him out of here, boy. Do you hear me? At mention of the word boy, the calf gave a little moo as his master had taught him. The class went wild with laughter. Little girls clapped their hands and the boys were beside themselves with excitement. Please, ma'am, he's my project, ma'am. I want so much to tell the class, ma'am. No, no, a hundred times no. He's quite nice, Mrs. Anthony. Josh turned to his pet. Aren't you, boy? The calf flicked his tongue across Josh's face. The class tittered. Ma'am, Josh said to Mrs. Anthony, you won't believe what he can do until you see him in action. Josh Mahone, she said, closing her eyes tightly. If you know what's good for you, you'll get him out of here this minute. Oh no, the children protested. Pardon me, asked Mrs. Anthony, looking at the class. Let him stay, said one boy, making sure that he was well hidden behind another when he said it. Did I hear someone say, let this animal remain? Yes, ma'am, chimed in the girls. Please. What? He's cute, ma'am, said Karen Lawson. Josh gathered up his courage, licking his lips. He pleaded, he's real smart, ma'am. Just watch him. I'll be over in no time, ma'am. Oh, dear me, said Mrs. Anthony, sitting down at her desk and burying her face in her hands. What is this? And it's got to be me. Everything strange happens to me first. 
The students watched gleefully as Josh calmly walked up to the front with Boy following. End of chapter one. We are now on to chapter two. Chapter two, an A grade report. Lie down, boy, Josh said. When Boy lay on the floor, contentedly chewing his cud, the children clapped their hands. Mrs. Anthony dared to open her eyes. She seemed relieved to see the bull calf lying quietly as a dog would. Well, class, began Josh, his eyes a twinkle with delight. This is how it all began. You all know Mr. Kelly, Mr. Tom Kelly. Of course you know him. You see, he had this cow that gave birth to a calf, but there were problems and the cow died. The calf was weak and Mr. Kelly didn't want to bother with him. You know how men are, busy and all, that with important things to do. So he gave me the calf, Scott Free too. This was way back in June class. I was so happy I nearly killed myself caring for him. Did I care for him? I fed him milk until he was able to eat grass. As the weeks went by, he began to gather strength, racing up and down the yard, you know, frisky and all, with his tail waving like a flag. Isn't that true, boy? Moo, boy said, as though he were a green. From the class, there were oohs and ahs. What's his name? Somebody asked. Boy, of course. Boy? Sure, you've heard me calling him boy. They laughed. What a funny name, a boy said. What's so funny about that, Tobias? Your name is not so pretty, you know, Josh said. The class laughed. Mrs. Anthony was beginning to relax. Josh went on. Well, you see, class, I am all the mother boy ever had. And we knocked it off real good from the very start. Everywhere I was during the summer, he was too. We went to the fields together, to the store together, to the woodlands. Even when I went fishing in the river, he tramped along on the banks. Boy doesn't know what it's like to have a rope around his neck. He's like a companion. I treat him like one too. The only trouble with him is that he wants to go everywhere with me in the house too. And my mom doesn't like that. And Mr. Watson's the same. Whenever I go to the store, boy wants to go in just like anybody else. And Mr. Watson won't allow him. He thinks boy will dirty his place. I think the same, shot Mrs. Anthony. If he doesn't, Josh Mahone, you'll... Him, ma'am, not boy, no, not ever. Josh turned to the class as businesslike as ever. As I was saying, we always quarrel over that, Mr. Watson and me, but never mind. When he was about two weeks old, boy got sick, real sick. He had fever and for three days, oh boy, I thought he would die. He couldn't get up, no way. I had to be with him all the time, night and day. One night, I stayed up with him in his house. I gave him all the care I could. Dry grass to sleep in and hot jack in the bush tea to drink. And I anointed his face and chest with liniment. He got better real fast. He turned to his pet. Come on, boy, stand up. Boy stood and shook himself. Wow, a boy said. He's full of tricks, said Josh. Look at this. From inside his shirt, he took a few blades of grass. Grass, asked Mrs. Anthony. In your shirt? She was smiling. Yes, ma'am. Guinea grass and very scratchy too. My skin itches, I'll say. His classmates laughed. Sick boy, Josh demanded. Boy sat on his haunches. The children clapped. Josh rewarded him with a few blades of grass. With his tongue curving out, the calf took them and began to eat. The pupils were delighted. 
From his pocket, Josh took a small lump of coarse salt and without asking permission, jumped atop a desk and said, Beg, boy, beg, beg. He held the salt high. He likes salt, he added. Cattle just adore salt. The bull calf got off his haunches and, balancing on both rear legs, reared up for the salt. See, Josh said, see how smart this rascal is? The students were breathless. Boy managed to take the lump of salt from Josh's hand. The children cheered and clapped their hands. Mrs. Anthony was now standing. She too was catching some of the excitement. Although the children saw animals almost every day of their lives, how many of them bothered to look closely at them? This business of having one in the classroom was against the rules, but by jingo jingo, it was educational. Now, Mrs. Anthony, Josh said, with your permission, ma'am, I'd like to introduce boy to the class. I mean, ma'am, I'd like them to come up and touch him. He likes people and he's very gentle. All right, Josh, she said, and went to plant herself at the door. But he really shouldn't be here, so please hurry. In their anxiety to touch boy, the children stampede to the front. Children, Mrs. Anthony pleaded, get back to your places. Listen, class, Josh said. He doesn't like noise or confusion, do you, boy? So you'll have to line up, okay? So they lined up and went up one at a time, touching boy, passing their hands along his back, feeling his peeping horns or tweaking his ears or hugging him. Boy replied by licking their hands or faces or giving them a friendly swish with his tail. They had all seen Josh with the calf during the summer, but at the time, it had meant nothing to them. Then it was commonplace. Now in the school, it was unique, a novelty. Isn't he cute? They said. I wish he were mine. Oh boy. At that, one boy mood. The children giggled. I've never seen any cow so smart, Brad said. He's not a cow, Josh said. Of course he's a cow. Oh no, he isn't, said Josh. A cow's a female and maybe a mother, you know. Boy's a bullkin. Bullkin? Oh, Brad looked towards Mrs. Anthony for a settlement of the argument. Josh's right, Brad, she said. Brad looked at Josh respectfully. Not only did he have a pet, he also had a better understanding of words. All right, children, said Mrs. Anthony. That should do. You've all seen Josh's pet and touched him. Now please, Josh, get him out of here. Yes, ma'am. And when you get back, I have something to say. True, Mrs. Anthony? Nothing bad, Josh. Thank you, ma'am. Give both Josh and boy a big hand, children, Mrs. Anthony said. They did and whooped too. Hip, hip, hooray, three times. Mrs. Anthony passed her hand along boy's back as the calf and Josh went out. Josh and the calf ambled down the corridor. Luckily, they did not run into the principal on the way. But they did pass a small girl who stood dumbstruck for a moment or two, her eyes wild. Then she bolted and ran as though the devil were after her. As she ran, she cried, Cow! A cow in the school! Josh and boy made tracks for the outdoors. Once they were outside, Josh said, Stay here, boy. Then he ran down the slope and plucked a handful of guinea grass. Boy, you were great, he said when he returned. What a performance. You made a lot of friends today, but you frightened that little girl and the worst part may yet come. You have to behave. This is a school and they don't take any hocus pocus around here. Understand that? This here grass is a reward for your good behavior so far, but 
I don't want you back in school. Understand? The school building stood on concrete pillars. At the highest point, it was about five feet off the ground. Josh led the calf under the building and said, Lie down, boy. And boy obeyed. Now, here's your grass. Eat it. But don't leave, you hear? Boy grunted and straightway began to munch on his good juicy grass. Meanwhile, Maria Bernard had run wild eye into the grade two classroom. Teacher, teacher, there's a cow in the school. A cow? Asked Mrs. Redmond. Nonsense, Maria. In the hall, teacher, a boy, a cow, and a boy. Take hold of yourself, little girl, said Mrs. Redmond, holding the girl by the shoulder. All right, she said, you wait here. I'll go see this cow you saw. Stepping outside her room, Mrs. Redmond walked down the corridor and looked around. She was as solid as a wooden barrel and shaped like one. And Josh, racing back to his classroom, ran into her. Always watch where you're going, Josh Mahone, she said, catching him by the shoulder and bringing him to a halt. Yes, Mrs. Redmond, ma'am. Did you see a cow parading the hall? Cow, ma'am? Yes, my little Maria whipped into the classroom, saying there was a cow in the hallway. With a boy, did you see such a thing? Such a thing, Mrs. Redmond? Yes, a cow. Cow, C-O-W. I didn't see a cow, ma'am. That's what I thought, too. She turned to go back to her classroom. And next time you keep an eye on where you're going. Yes, ma'am. Josh went his way thinking. Well, boy isn't really a cow, so I didn't tell a lie. If she had asked me if I saw a bullkin, I don't know exactly. But I didn't see any cow. Boy is not a cow. When he re-entered his classroom, his classmates once again gave him a round of applause. Where is he, Josh? asked Tony Killy. Under the school, Tony. Good, said Mrs. Anthony. And I hope he stays there. He will, ma'am. No matter, she said. I won't let him in here again. Once is enough for me. Walking over to the door, she turned the key in the lock. If he returns, he'll have to visit another class, and that teacher will have to cope with him. Josh didn't like the idea that boy was being locked out. He hoped the calf would stay put under the school. But if he didn't, Josh would have liked him to be able to come back to this class. That way, Josh could handle the situation. But what if he went to another classroom? In any case, Josh, you gave us a treat this morning, she said. Do you agree, class? Yes, ma'am, they said together. I can't think of another holiday better spent by a boy. You not only went through a lot of trouble to bottle fed and take care of that calf, but you must have spent endless hours training him. I've never seen anything like him before. Never before. The pupils expressed their agreement by clapping. How many of your children have ever been so close to an oxen? Asked Mrs. Anthony. Four boys held up their hands. Two said they had milked cows. The others had only touched them. None of the girls had ever been that close to one before. So you see then, we must all thank Josh Mahone for the opportunity. I myself had never touched one. It was really a treat. You've made us an A-grade report of your summer activities, Josh. Again, the children applauded. Well, class, said Mrs. Anthony, beaming, what should we do? Hear some more reports or discuss Josh's excellent one. Discuss his, ma'am? Good. I believe in having a follow-up on that, and there's no better time than the present to do so. Josh was feeling proud and sitting as light as a feather. I was pleasantly surprised, she went on, when I heard Josh correct Brad on that small but important error, that his pet was a bullkin and not a cow. 
How many of you others knew the difference between a cow and a bull? A few hands shot up in the air.